Ladies and gentlemen, greetings. This is Prosthodontics on Friday Night Live, which addresses different steps of uh, dental prosthodontic treatment and its uh, side effects. Under the grand theme of Back to the Basics, so we are going to talk about fabricating full denture using BPS. That simply won't come off. Today we have with us Dr. Yi Hun Jae of Yi Dadam Dental Clinic, who is renowned for making excellent suction dentures. Thank you for coming here all the way despite your busy schedule treating patients. I'm sure you provide lots of seminars. Thank you for appearing on Prosthodontics on Friday today. Before we begin your lecture, could you briefly explain about it? When I studied at school, there was no such thing as BPS system, and by using this, I want to talk about how to provide a comfortable and safe treatment for both the surgeon and patients. BPS system is something that we haven't learned when we were students, so I look forward to your lecture even more. I look forward to your lecture. Those of you watching from dental site, you can participate real time via the chat. Leave your questions and have them answered in real time, and you may win the Starbucks coffee coupons as well. Those of you who have left the most memorable, best questions will be selected, and Busan Music Tiger Dental Set will be sent. Learn about full denture and try your luck at winning amazing prizes. I look forward to your keen interest and participation, and let us begin prosthodontics on Friday. Greetings. I'm going to talk about theory and clinical approach on BPS. BPS stands for Biofunctional Prosthetic System and is designed to provide a prosthesis that is safe and comfortable for the patients. The system itself has been devised by Dr. Gacy, Dr. Strack, and Dr. Gerber. This is a comprehensive system. The basic concepts of VPS include the myostatic concept, closed mouth technique, having the patient make normal and natural movements, gothic arch tracing, semi-balanced occlusion, and injection. If we look at the different steps in fabricating BPS denture, first, the alginate impression is made, and the patient's vertical dimension is measured. Second, the functional impression is taken, followed by try-in and final prosthesis delivery. Through these four steps, we can provide excellent denture to patients. Let me explain different steps in detail. First is the appointment. The first appointment, alginate impression is anatomical overextended impression in BPS. In other words, anatomically, we take impression as wide as possible. How can we do this clinically? First, we determine the tray size for upper and lower. When you mix alginate, you make it more watery than you normally would and add it to the 50cc syringe. At the same time, you mix alginate less watery than you would normally do and add it on the tray. That less watery mix is placed on the tray. Within the oral cavity, 
You apply the watery alginate using syringe on the vestibule as well as the deep part of powerful area. You place the alginate on the tray in oral cavity and you do not have any movement and then push it up. The alginate in the tray is less watery, so it can be spread wide across oral cavity. After taking alginate impression in the upper, our line is measured and this is marked on the alginate. Next is lower. It's the same. It is first injected and the less watery alginate mix is put into oral cavity to take impression. The tongue can go under the tray, so you have the tongue move left and right. By doing this, you can see the alginate impression. The impression is quite wide and extensive. We do not use this as is, and we use what is only necessary. Why the alginate impression has been taken, and after that, in individual tray, to fabricate it, mounting of upper and lower is necessary. During this process, centric tray to register vertical dimension. This centric tray is tried in at patient's rest position and it is taken out by about 3 millimeters and vertical dimension and occlusion is set. Alginate or putty is used to mix and it is placed in centric tray and within oral cavity you have the patient bite on it lightly. And then we have the patient close mouth in line with the measurements we have gained. At the end, we have the patient swallow lightly. At this point, the lower jaw may be dispositioned. We don't look at the border with the centric tray. This is for mounting of upper and lower. And if three points of alveolar ridge is clear, we can use it as is. First, lab process. The alginate and centric bite for the upper and lower that has been registered is sent to the lab. Model is made and using horizontal measuring device, Adjustments are made and it is now mounted on the articulator. After this process, the contour of individual tray needs to be drawn on cast. When we do this, myostatic concept is used. Biomyostatic concept, this means the denture bearing zone which does not move as the patient goes through physiologic activities. In the case of upper, Palatal area and alveolar bone, alveolar ridge can be defined as myostatic concept because when the patient goes through physiologic activities, these are the areas that don't move. Hence, this is referred to as myostatic zone. And the upper, in the posterior area, if you form post damming nicely, retention is formed. So, the palatal area and alveolar ridge can be considered as myostatic area. As shown on this image, from the deep side of vestibule, the tray has been drawn 1.5 to 2 millimeters shorter in the past, but now the, we try to avoid all movable tissues and make lines on all areas. By doing this, tray is placed only in the area where there's no movement, so it's smaller. This is the contour of an individual tray for the lower. External oblique ridge on the buccal side, height of contour on the lingual anterior side, 
mylohyoid ridge on the lingual side, and two-thirds of retromolar pad in the posterior area. It may sound very complicated. As shown on the image, the left is overextended impression and on the right is the contour of individual tray. The muscle attached area in the lower external oblique ridge with buccal muscle and mylohyoid ridge with mylohyoid muscle. These areas will be set as myostatic zone and individual tray will be fabricated. When doing this, although we do block out, we do not do overall relief. The entire surface is considered a stop and relief is not done as we fabricate the tray. Self-polymerization or light polymerization resin tray is used to fabricate the base plate. Individual tray is fabricated as shown when doing this. Nathometa M, the component for Gothic arch is added here. As shown on left, you can see a handle attached to the individual tray. The handle is shown on the right and it's referred to as Nathometa M. The plastic part is under the occlusal rim and this is used for functional impression. The white part is removed and if you connect the gothic arch pin and the plate, this device can be used to do gothic arch tracing. Once these are fabricated at the lab and sent to the dental clinic, you have the second appointment with the patient. This is an individual tray in oral cavity. In occlusal surface, there is a white occlusal rim and this is used for functional impression. In the case of upper, this is the border line of individual tray and a tray adhesive is applied first and border line silicone is used to do border molding. Heavy body is used. Heavy body is applied on tray border and it is inserted into oral cavity and for functional impression you guide a patient's movement you put the individual tray in and with your finger you hold the palatal area and you have the patient to suck on the finger after that you put in the lower individual tray and while holding it you have the patient grind the teeth left and right about two or three times the third movement is the movement to saying U and E, and this movement is repeated for seven times. By having these three types of movement, the border molding for upper and lower can be complete. As shown on the video, I am having the patient do it. I am having the patient grind the teeth and say U and E. This is repeated. The surgeon does not hold the tray and the movement should be done by the patient themselves so once it is set and when you remove it from oral cavity and you can see that border molding is done. In some areas, because alginate impression was used to fabricate individual tray, the individual tray is pressed against the tissue surface and in the case of those areas, please remove them. After that, on the individual tray, tray adhesive is applied, light body silicone is applied, and overall injection is done. You put it back in the oral cavity. And as same with when we made border molding, the same movements are repeated. The patient is doing U and E movements. 
After setting, once you remove it from oral cavity, you can see that border has been formed and a final functional impression has been taken. What we need to take note of is that the thickness of border is not consistent and it's an intermix of thick areas and thin areas. In this system, there can be defect areas that can be observed in rubber. In these areas, you need to apply light to body once again, and if you put it back in oral cavity, then we will be able to get the desired effect. Next is functional movement of the lower. As was with the upper, silicone is applied on lower tray, heavy body silicone is used, and in the case of lower, five different functional movements are done. You have the patient protrude the tongue forward and then move tongue up and down and wet their lips. After that, upper tray is inserted and with the lips closed, you have the patient to grind teeth two or three times, and after that, you have the patient to say U and E about seven times. This is the actual video of patient. The tray is placed in oral cavity. You check whether it has been set properly, and then you have the patient close mouth and do functional movement grinding left and right two and three times. After swallowing, you have the patient to perform U and E movements. At times, patients have difficulties doing this, and in that case, the surgeon can demonstrate in front of the patient, and it can be of great help. As you can see, the staff is demonstrating how to do the movements, how to stick the tongue out and to wet the lips. And then we have the patient close mouth and then repeat movement. Once border molding is complete, the tray in the oral cavity is removed and excessive heavy body is removed, the light body is injected once again and you have the patient repeat the same movement so when water molding with an oral cavity was done, protruding tongue and wetting lips, the tray for the upper is inserted and lower movement is Repeated, we have the patient say U and E repeatedly. This is the impression body that we get in the end. Trimming is done and the border area is adjusted. And after trimming, as you can see, the such impression body is complete and in the lower, in the occlusal surface, the white occlusal rim is removed. In the lower, a gothic arch pin is inserted, and as for the upper, a closal plate is inserted, and coloring pencil is used to apply color, and is connected. Now in the oral cavity, we have the patient to do protrusive and lateral movements. The Movement is shown in the arrow form, and the vertex is the CR. There is a white plastic plate with a hole, and you align it with the vertex. And when the patient closes mouth in the lower, the gothic arch pin goes into this hole. Once this is done, the lower movement has been recorded accurately, therefore, you connect it. After removal, as shown, this kind of final impression body can be gained, and we need to do one more thing. We need to set the tooth size accordingly with the patient's face. Patient's nasal width is measured, and in line with it, the size is set. 
the end carrier 6 is determined in this way. Can I ask you a question? In BPS system, you've mentioned Nathometer. In my understanding, it establishes the upper and lower relations and it determines the vertical height. Nathometer M system. Is this absolutely necessary to have the BPS stick very well? Is this a must? Is this essential in fabricating denture with good retention? You do not need to use nathometer M imperatively. You can use it and get results, but it does not affect the retention. If the patient closes mouth in a certain direction, then it doesn't matter, but if the patient closes mouth in different pathways, then you need to use the nathometer M. The audience may think, I don't have nathometer M, and perhaps I would not be able to use a BPS system, and my denture may not have as good retention. So even if you don't have nathometer M, you can provide good prosthesis. It's good to have one, but it's not imperative. Thank you for your wonderful answers. So let's look at the chat. We are going to have a interim Q&A session. Smile again, Professor Choino, Dr. Yunjae, greetings. First episode, I hope it sticks really well. Dr. Lee Hun Jae, I really like the national flag mark in your Apple laptop. Malankao, do you need to have a lab within the clinic if you take impression using alginate? Yes, I use alginate, and if you send it to the lab, you need to put it in a bag with sufficient moisture, and it needs to be fabricated within 24 hours. So, I think a baking stone, I think most dental clinics have it. If you're busy, then you may have to utilize lab. Bora, do you use molding X? This system is to guide the patient's functional movement. If you use X, it can interfere with functional movement. So molding X is not recommended here. It will be difficult if you use molding X when the patient goes oo e oo e. I can do it, it says. If the patient has been a dentalist for a long period of time and has very little alveolar bone, if the patient has very little retention, will it be better to provide implant-supported denture? I'm concerned about retention. I'm concerned about maintenance. If I provide a full arch implant to fix the prosthesis because there's only about one or two millimeters of alveolar bone left up to the sinus, which should I use to fix the prosthesis, implant bar, or magnetic? This is slightly off topic. If it is difficult to place implants, it is better to do implant supported over denture. If the patient has been a dentalist long time, I think implant treatment may be unlikely, and in that case, I think you should just proceed with BPS system. In this case, BPS can be utilized as well. Malankao. Grinding lower left and right, this is to register coronoid process, right? At times, due to coronoid process, the buccal space can be extremely tight. In that case, do you adjust the individual tray thin and then proceed with border molding? I think it's the upper. We make individual tray thick in BPS. The border side is about 1 mm to 1.5 mm, so it's thin. Heavy body is used, and if the tray is in contact, that area is removed, and final light body silicone is used to register. 
So you don't use thick from the start, yes. Malankao, when the patient goes oo e, does the movement of palatal soft tissue affect the impression quality? When oo or e movement is done, will soft tissue movement affect it? When we take first alginate, tray is measured up to the post palatal seal. Therefore, even if the patient goes oo and e, the soft tissue does not move, and it does not affect the sealing in a significant way. Pretty scar. Today's lecture is really meaningful. Denture suction. I'm not sure how thin I need to mix the alginate. Can you share the ratio? You've mentioned it, but can you provide more detail? When you mix the alginate, at times, dental clinics use measuring cups, but in most cases, you just go by your intuition. People with more experience tend to do that. So you need to put water 10%, 20% more than what you're used to it. And if you want to use it like a heavy body, then you need to remove moisture by 10 to 20% and mix it densely. When I went to Evoclar, there was ready-made, and if you put it in syringe, the water burst and was mixed into the alginate. Is this available? I think that is out of production, and it was quite expensive, yes. Good evening. This is really practical lecture. Denture suction. What CC syringe do you use? When you put in alginate, how much do you put in in a what cc syringe? So I use a medical 50 cc syringe, it's for anema. You don't use a syringe for the needle. I put in about half, about 25 cc. You can use it sufficiently. Denture suction. So do you have a standard for Gothic arch guidance? How can I guide Gothic arch nicely? If the patient cannot do it properly, at first the patients have trouble. Yes. You have the patient sitting upright and you have the patient open and close a couple of times. And then you have the patient to move and grind the way it's comfortable for that person. If you remove it, it may not be the arrow shape. It may be a thick arrow shape. It may look blunt. In that case, you remove it and then you apply color pencil once again and repeat. At that time, do not have the patient move a couple of times. Just once or twice would suffice. So it requires practice for the patient to be able to do it properly, yes. Do you use a special alginate instead of general alginate? You have pink and white colors. The product I've shown you is the product from Ivoclar. It's alginate for BPS, it's white and red. They're both from Ivoclar. There are separate products for syringe and tray, and when you use it in dental clinic, you can use your alginate that you have. Choice, so when you do border molding with modeling compound, it takes a lot of time. I think you'd be able to save a lot of time by doing border molding with heavy body. Bora, tooth size, how do you make requests to the lab? The lab doesn't know the patient's face. How do you mark it? I think it's up to the dentist. You need to tell the lab which tooth to use. That's the principle. If you look at how it was measured previously, Below, there's number for the six anterior. Articulate the number and the shade and 
In line with that, the upper posterior and lower anterior are connected. I think you need to send it to the lab that does the BPS system. If you send it to any lab, it might work that way. These days, a lot of lab work on BPS. Choice. How about taking preliminary impression with potty? That's not a bad idea because we talked about overextended impression. If you remain within that concept, that's okay. So we will entertain one more question and proceed with your lecture. This is from the administrator. This is from Hongbongs on YouTube. The patient has been chewing on the right side primarily and in the upper right and the lower right teeth, due to chronic periodontitis, there is unilateral occlusion on the right side, and if CR recording is difficult, how should I take a record? Because of periodontal disease on one side, the patient is chewing on the other side. The pathway of lateral and protrusive movement is not very important. The starting point is important. It's about finding the starting point. If the patient has the habit of chewing on the right or left side, it doesn't really matter. In terms of CR recording, that is so. Thank you for the wonderful answer. Thank you, viewers, for leaving lots of words of support and questions. I look forward to your continued interest, and we will have a lucky draw and send coffee coupons to those who have raised questions. Please carry on with your lecture, and as for the rest of the questions, we will entertain them in the Q&A session. Once impression is done, it's sent to the lab. As mentioned earlier, model is poured and thorough analysis mounting is done. When we studied in school, we learned about fully balanced occlusion, but clinically speaking, it's difficult to apply. So here, semi-balanced occlusion concept is used. In centric state, guidance is made so that six anteriors are not in contact and upon lateral movement in working side apart from canine, premolar guidance and on the other side, balancing stop needs to be made and such three-point contact, at least three points of contact, are necessary for denture stability. As shown here, teeth alignment is complete in this state. If you move the lower to the right side on working side, guidance occurs on premolars on both sides but not on the canine. On the other hand, in the non-working side, there's balancing stop. In the functional cusp of upper and lower six. So, with the three-point contact, the upper denture can be stabilized. If you move it the other way, it's the same. In working side, in premolar area, guidance occurs, and on the other side, balancing stop is formed. Next is protrusive movement. When protrusive edge-to-edge -edge movement is made, in the posterior area on both sides, a stop is formed. At this point, we normally say that denture patients should not cut the thread, but in this case, even if the thread is cut, it's not a problem. Nice occlusion can be formed. From occlusal view, you can see that overjet and overbite has been formed in the upper and lower six anterior. This is third appointment. This is the teeth alignment. In this state, we can look at aesthetics, eccentric relation, and centric position, phonetics, excursive movements, and others. If you do it too much, denture tooth can be dislodged. 
You can have the patient to move lightly and check the area. This is the third appointment. Injection system is used to complete the denture. In general, if you put in resin and do packing, average heat expansion and distortion rate leads to 7% or 8%. As a way to reduce such percentage, the system continues to apply pressure and polymerization is done. This is an evil clar system and it is applied to BPS system. After curing, remounting is done to adjust occlusion. This is the final result. The form looks quite different from existing denture. This is the fourth appointment. In the fourth appointment, it is delivered to oral cavity. PIP and indicating paste is applied to tissue surface to check adaptation and fit as mentioned. You need to check a semi-balanced occlusion. When the patient does protrusion on both sides, in posterior area, there's a stop. And if you look at the working site on left and right, in premolar area, guidance occurs, and on the other side, a balancing stop is formed. On the other side, in premolar, there's guidance, and on the other side, there's balancing. Let's look at how it all looks within oral cavity. In the case of this patient, the patient has upper and lower denture. There is semi-balanced occlusion. If you take a look at the video, the denture in the lower moves left and right to following the upper surface, but the upper denture does not move. The upper denture should not move despite movement in order to maintain retention and continued maintenance. How much retention is there? If you look at the patient's oral cavity, in the posterior area, there is barely any alveolar ridge, and in the anterior area, there is very limited alveolar ridge. Will there be retention even in this situation? The retention is actually unrelated with alveolar ridge height. Retention depends on the tissue that covers the border. You put the denture in the oral cavity and use the clamp to move the denture. There is no alveolar ridge, so you can see slight movement left and right. But in terms of retention, you can also see that the denture is not dislodged. In the case of BPS system, it is in harmony with the overall oral tissue of the patient, so if there's harmony, sufficient retention can be achieved. As you can see, although there's barely any alveolar ridge, the retention is excellent. If we do this, not just the dentist, but the patients can enjoy good results so we can maintain a nice and ideal relationship. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Dr. Lee, thank you for the wonderful lecture. You mentioned that this denture really sticks and it's beyond expectations. It's almost as if adhesive has been applied and the denture looks very good. In most cases, there are issues with lower, but the sealing is excellent and the retention looks excellent. Did you devise this denture? That is correct. 
I am VU. Let's entertain the rest of the questions. We've addressed the question about putty. Light, I think this can be applied only when the patient can move, lift movement by themselves. In the case of elderly patient or patients with limitation in movement, is there a way for the operator to do it artificially for the patient or can I do conventional cheek movement? So we can pull on the patient's lips. I think the question is about that. It doesn't matter unless you do it excessively. Actually, when we compare excessive or minimum way, I think it's better to do it excessively. It can be more comfortable for the patient. U E. This is done by the patient themselves. U. Pulling. It's actually done by another person. If the patient is unable to say U E, the operator can hold the lips and press or pull. So you have the patient say U and E in an exaggerated manner, or you have to make that form. High end when taking BPS impression, should the border be four to six millimeters below mylohyoid bridge? Four to six millimeters below mylohyoid bridge. This is the denture border for conventional denture. In the case of BPS, Tray is made up to mylohyoid ridge and the border is formed with the patient's functional movement. Does extension occur? Yes. I do not extend up to 4 to 6 millimeters. Malankao, after taking alginate impression, you take a bite with alginate. If it takes over 24 hours to deliver to lab, is there a material that we can replace alginate with? You can use a putty. You can use putty to take a centric bite, and in the case of alginate, even if 24 hours have elapsed, as you have seen, so there can be deformation and what is pressed is removed from oral cavity so it is not significantly affected even if you use alginate it's not a big problem if you really think this would be of concern you can use bite material Denture suction. I think this is a lab issue. Where can I find a lab that understand BPS system? I think this needs to be addressed separately. Can we talk about it here? Those who have completed BPS system training are registered in Evo Clark Korean office. So if you reach out, you'll be able to get the contacts. Will we not be able to get such information if we don't go through training? If you don't go through training, you will not know what to do. The lab technicians won't know what to do. So lab technicians need to know. It's training for lab technicians. If you reach out to Evoclar, you'll be able to get the information of the lab that has gone through such training. So dentists are not receiving this training, but it's for the lab technicians, understood? DBDBDIB007, I'm really liking this lecture. So does the lab fabricate tray following the centric relation of upper and lower? I've skipped something when I was talking about centric bite. After taking centric bite, patient's midline and interpapillary line. Parallel line is drawn on the tray, and by looking at the drawing, analysis is performed. 
and we don't find the middle, we use that as middle and through analysis in an even manner, the lab fabricates it. Good idea. Will there be any scarring on the soft tissue? If you just try to pull it off, well, will there be any scarring on soft tissue? There's no scarring on the soft tissue. If it is excessively pulled out, there can be pinpoint bleeding, but the patients don't really do that, so it's not a big issue. In the topic of forcefully taking the denture out, what should the patient do if the patient wants to take it out? Is there an easier way to take it out when the patients take it out? They need to reflect the lower lip and then use their thumb. They make sure the air goes in and reflect it and take it out. ID, wonderful. There is no metal base on the denture. Will it be susceptible to fracture? Can I fabricate it by adding metal base? Yes, that is possible. It doesn't matter. This is related to border, so I think metal base is possible, and I'm sure not a lot of people will think like this, but if it is insured to the metal base, it's going to be more expensive. That's true. Denture suction. When I use Evoclar system, can I use internal mesh or metal base? I think this is the same question. The same person, is there sufficient resistance to fracture in the palatal area? I think this question is also related to the metal base. So if you use a metal frame, it's going to be better. Malankao, it seems like overjet is significant in the anterior area. Are there any complaints regarding phonetics? If you need to reduce overjet, do you set ramp in the posterior area? Rather than setting a ramp, you need to give curve of speed so that it goes up. Then it will solve your question. The person says that overjet seems significant when protrusion is done. It can be in contact, and if it is up to the level so that the noodles can be cut, it's okay. When we teach at university, we say that 2 mm of overjet is okay because it's not very ideal if the denture hits the upper teeth from the beginning. TG Chem 90, is there any benefit in Ivoclar system? Advantages of Ivoclar system. There was a test performed at Yonsei University in the same patient. Conventional denture and Evoclar denture were fabricated at the same time. And a blind test was performed and the patient chose BPS over conventional denture. Was it just the case? I think it, it was done by interns and there were several such cases. and. I helped them perform this test. When the patient put it on, they felt less unnatural because it records the tissue movement. I think this has led to better results. Thank you. Light. The denture based resin seems to go into injection compared with the denture based resin in terms of strength. Is there a difference? Do I need to use mesh or metal? I think this person is talking about injection system. I've received training once at Evoclar HQ and I've seen a four or five ton dump truck go over the denture, but still there was no fracture. Such video clips were shared a lot. I think it has to do with a resin material when I was in university. Injection system, it is quite expensive, yes. We had injection system and when you make a denture with it, there is much less distortion. I really felt that it was worth the money. 
Because it continues to push and there's very little distortion. Kyonu, for artificial teeth, do you use Evroclar artificial teeth? Not necessarily. Teeth in which semi-balanced occlusion can be formed easily is from that of Ivoclar because it's under that concept, but it's expensive. If you use the product from other companies, you need to make a semi-balanced occlusion structure. If you are to do that, it doesn't matter which product you use. There are many ways to achieve semi-balanced occlusion. There is a second molar ramp, and there are many ways to achieve it. Kyonu, how do you form occlusion? Semi-balanced occlusion. Sun, thank you for the wonderful lecture. After completing lower denture, upon adaptation, the patient has gag reflex. Patient experiences gag reflex in the upper more frequently. In the case of lower, if it is extended towards the throat, you need to cut it. The area that is elongated in the retromolar pad. There's an administrator's comment that there's a question on YouTube by Amelo. Compared with well-made conventional denture, what are the benefits of BPS? If I were to try both, which system is easier to fabricate? You have already mentioned that from patient's perspective, it was better, but in terms of easiness. In the case of conventional denture, when we go on training, you need to have a lot of experience to be able to make a good conventional denture. A lot of know-how is required. In comparison, you just need to stick by the determined rule for BPS. A patient makes the movement themselves, so no special technique is required on the part of surgeon. So there's no major difference between beginner and expert. There may be differences, but not that significant. Kyonu, if there is a significant lower alveolar ridge resorption, can I do implant supported over denture in the anterior area? So can you do implant supported over denture using BPS? Yes, it's possible. As for other factors, it's all same with the conventional denture. If retention is excellent, perhaps you may forego implant. But if you feel uncertain, you may do over denture just to rest easy. I think that will be more safe. Today we have addressed all the questions. Thank you for the wonderful answers and thank you for completing your lecture within the set time period. I would like to express my gratitude to everyone who has participated in the chat. And now we will select the best question among many questions that have made today's prosthodontics on Friday so special. Those of you chosen as the best question will be sent to Yusin Music Tiger Dental Set. Can you select one person that has raised the best question? There were so many good questions today, and ID Malang Kao has asked many questions. Many questions. Rather than pinpointing which question, I think this person has made many meaningful questions. This person's dedication has really paid off. Malang Kao, congratulations. Those of you selected as best question, a separate contact will be made. Winners of Coffee Coupon event, you'll receive text on Tuesday. Can you give words of advice to dentists who are studying up until late to make excellent dentures that won't fall out and about the BPS system? Any words of advice or encouragement? BPS system sounds quite foreign and it may feel quite distant. However, once you try it clinically, then you would really experience the change in paradigm. 
You feel less stressed about denture patients. It's a system that is good for the patient and a surgeon. I hope you embrace the system and we can provide good results together. We'd be able to treat fully dentulous patients well and it'll be satisfactory for both dentists and patients. Thank you for your great lecture and thank you for being here despite your busy schedule. Dear viewers of Prosthodontics on Friday, how did you like today's lecture with Dr. Lee Hun Jae? We were able to learn about how to fabricate a full denture using BPS system. As for questions that have not been addressed today, if you send your questions over, Dr. Lee Hun Jae will be able to answer them via reply. In the next lecture, Professor Im Myung Jun of Seoul National University is going to talk about addressing pursed lips, establishing vertical dimension. Thank you for staying up until late with us. Thank you.